Just around the corner, there's a rainbow in the sky. So let's have another cup of coffee, and let's have another piece of high. The High Tech Nomad here, and today I want to talk about getting your music to play on your Amazon Echo. Now, if you're like me, and hopefully you're not, you have a your own collection of music. And here's just some of mine. And you know, the two things that I love is certain types of music and driving from Las Vegas to California in the desert. My wife hates both because during that ride, I usually play all of my favorite music, which is none of her favorite music. I have things like songs we sing together. She loves that one. Um, I have a Calypso record from the 50s uh, recorded in Haiti. This one doesn't even have the Mighty Sparrow. This one doesn't even have an outside jacket. We have another one here. We have The Last of the Secret Agents with a little bit in there by uh, Nancy Sinatra. And I have, let's see what else I have here. I have a couple other little 45s and I have some reel to reels, some great music on those. I even have some, these are the first records. I even have some what's called Edison, Edison cylinders. These were actually Thomas Alva Edison. And if you saw my other video, you'll, you'll know I, I talked about the music Black Sabbath. And I explained that the band Black Sabbath actually got their name, not, it wasn't Black Sabbath. They picked Black Sabbath, but it was because of a movie starring Boris Koloff from the 1960s. And there were two versions of the album. I hunted this one down only to find out that was not the one I wanted. And I finally got one of the rare CDs of that music by Lex, Les Baxter. And I, I mentioned that I got it at Dress Circle Records in Covent Gardens in England, which is, I believe, closed at this point. In any event, my point is, is that many of us have music that we want to use on an Amazon Echo, but we can't do that because first they told you you could load up your own music, then they said no, you couldn't load anymore, and then as of April 1st, any music you have loaded up, they've gotten rid of. So you can only listen to the music, supposedly, only listen to the music that they sell or through some of the stations like iHeart or TuneIn or something like that. But there is a way of playing your own music. Now, I'm not going to go over, if anybody has questions about how you get your music off your, off of your, the media that it's on, I'll put some links down below. They're very, very easy. There's a, there's a cassette recorder, a reel-to-reel -reel player, a record player. There's a bunch of those from um, ION, and I'll put the links down below. And they just have outputs, uh, USB outputs that go into your computer. I think the units, they're, they're not very expensive. In any event, you know, so the record player has a USB cord. You plug that into your computer, you put your music on it. It will take it from there. It'll give you the MP3. So I'm not going to go over how to make MP3s. If you have any questions, send a question. If you have any questions on it, send me a question. I'll deal with it. So I'm going to assume that you already have your MP3s. Now the question is, how do we get those MP3s so that we can play them through the Amazon Echo? Well, the answer is a program, a website called My Media Alexa. And what My Media Alexa is going to allow us to do is stream music from our home computer to the cloud, which in turn will send it to our Amazon Echo. It doesn't put it up there. Very, very reasonable rates. I think I'll have them on the screen for you now, as you can see. Very, very simple, very, very easy. All we have to do is upload the music. Now, in order to achieve this, what happens is, is that we have to put our music on a computer that's going to be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week so that when we say play music, it's gonna just go and get that. Now, some of you don't have a computer that you have on 24 hours a day. Some of you have, uh, some of you don't want to leave a computer on 24 hours a day. And that's why this ties into the other video, which I'll put the link up there right now. This ties into our video talking about Raspberry Pi computers. Uh, very quickly, uh, <clears throat> Watch the video. This is a $10 computer that you can get. It's very, very easy to use. I'm not gonna go over how to get it and set it up because that's what 
that video is for. So go ahead and take a look at that if you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pis. Okay, silly. So leaving this computer on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year is nothing. And there's no moving parts or anything like that. Now, the way that we're gonna get the music on there is your, wherever you have your music, you're going to load it onto a thumb drive and then we're gonna plug the thumb drive in here. And I found that even though I have tons and tons, I have something like two terabytes of music. In all honesty, I don't listen to more than maybe five gigs or 10 gigs worth. Remember, music files are actually fairly small. So five or 10 gigs worth is like, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 songs. So that's actually more than enough. So again, when we're setting up our Raspberry Pi, if you use the maximum, um, which for most people is gonna be, uh, uh, for most usable SD cards is gonna be 32 gigs. The operating system only takes up five or 10. So that's gonna leave you like 12 gigs worth of music, which I'm telling you is more than enough. I thought, oh, I'm gonna to have to do it. And I was like, no. Now, quick note, you can use a thumb drive. You cannot use a portable hard drive. A portable hard drive, you have to go through a whole bunch of setup on a Raspberry Pi in order for it to see it. You're much, easy, much better to do this. Get yourself, what is this, a, the 60, even though this is 64 gigs, it'll still read it. Just go ahead and get, in fact, if you needed more memory, you could leave this plugged in. So you'd have whatever you have on the Raspberry Pi, plus you'd have whatever is on there if you needed to do that. But in most cases, you're gonna just load all of your music onto this. We're gonna put it in here and we're gonna uh, move it over to there. And then once we do that, this will be the computer that we have left on. So let's switch over and take a look at how we set up the software. We're gonna go and we're gonna set up the software and I'm gonna show how simple it is. Okay, so I'm gonna try and do as much of this in real time because that's how I learn when I, I, I learn best when I actually can watch somebody doing something and sort of pause and follow the steps. So let's first take a look and see what we have to do to our Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna access the Raspberry Pi by going to VNC, which again, I covered before. I'm gonna stop saying that, I promise. And I know what my IP address is. So it's 192.168.1.178. And we'll just call this my media. We'll click connect. It'll ask us, I haven't bothered to change the, uh, the username and password. Okay. So we are now talking to that Raspberry Pi, that little chip, that, uh, that little board that I had in my hand. All right, we're gonna stop referring to the past again. Do your homework, go back and take a look at the other video so you know what's going on. So we're all set, we're ready to go. This is a brand new install. This is, um, other than turning on VNC, I've done nothing else to this. So we're gonna open a browser. And again, since it is a Pi, now you can use a Pi 2, you can use a Pi 3, you can use a Pi 0. I use a Pi 0 because it's the cheapest and it's the smallest, although it is slower but it's not gonna make any difference to your music. It may make a little difference for when you're setting it up, but it's not gonna make any difference to your music. So just, I would just go with the Pi Zero, it's a lot easier. So we're gonna go to mymediaalexa.com, mymediaalexa.com. Sorry, I didn't find .com.com. .com. Sorry, she, so if you're gonna say Alexa, it's best to put it on do not disturb, which is what I've just done now. So this will take a second to come up. And again, what's gonna happen is it's going to just take the music. We're gonna store the music on our Raspberry Pi and it's gonna take the music and it's gonna stream it to our device, whether we're in the home or in the car. Again, if you saw the other review on the Rove Viva, then you know what I'm talking about, that you can actually use Amazon Echo in your car. Uh, again, you can look that up. And again, this is, probably the most painful part of this entire process, which is just that the Raspberry Pi, if you're used to a regular computer, you're like, my God, this is slow. But that's, what do you want for $5 for crying out loud? It's a working computer the size of your thumb. Uh, actually found, let me just take these out. There's actually two programs that Raspberry Pi loads. One looks like it's some kind of blocking, U-block, uh, I have found that when I remove that, I think it's to try and block ads and things like that. And it comes, it's on by default. 
And I have found in the past that when I remove that, uh, things go a lot quicker, especially if it's trying to figure out what should be there and what shouldn't be there. And again, we're only gonna be online for a couple of minutes until we set this up, so it's not a real big deal. Uh, you can also see we're really pushing the CPU on the zero. That's that 100%. That means that's all there is. There ain't no more. So we'll try this again. MyMediaAlexa.com. And we'll see how long it takes to come up now that we have removed. I think the other one is to allow it to play video. But again, we're not, we don't need that uh, extension to be loaded in in order for this to work. Uh, the size of your thumb. So we're gonna we're gonna hold that off for once. We're gonna go and do something else and then come back. Of course, as soon as I go, it'll just pop up. All right, fine. So we need to put some music. I ha already have a bunch of music, but for purposes of this demonstration, I obviously can't use any of the music I showed you because it is copyright protected. So we're gonna go to my Storyblocks Audio Blocks account. And I'll have a link down there. They have a seven, I have a, I'm gonna put a link down there. They have a seven day free trial that you can download as much stuff as you want. And even if you don't sign up for their full service, you get to keep all the music that you downloaded and you can use that for any of your videos or any of your projects. I'm gonna leave one, I actually belong to all three, which is video blocks for videos, image blocks for images, and audio blocks for audio. All the music that you hear, all the pictures and music and the videos that you see in all of these videos that I create to keep from having any kind of copyright or copyright strike issues come from Storyblocks and I'll talk more about them later. But in any event, let's download some music so that we have some. And they have a nice little preview feature, which is basically if I click on that block, it just goes ahead and starts playing. Okay. So to download them, I would just click on this and that just went ahead. You can see this is downloading. Okay, we're gonna imagine I just did that 12 times. I've already downloaded them. Um, stop that, okay. So we've got our 12 pieces. So let's, let's continue on. I don't wanna go back and forth, so let's continue on. So I have a thumb drive plugged in. And again, I'm using Samsung DeX and I have it plugged in. If you're using Windows, your thumb drive would be plugged into your computer. If you're using the DeX, one of the things I noticed since the Oreo update hit my phone is I couldn't figure out where to format a drive. They decided to hide it for some reason. It used to be right out in front. So you have to go into settings, you have to go into storage, and then once you're in storage, you have to come up to more options, and then you have to go to storage settings. Yeah, don't know why they bothered to do all that. Once you're there, you'll be able to find your drives. And once you find your drives, you will have the ability to format it here. Don't know why they did that. Okay. So let's go ahead and move our music on there since we've already downloaded it. We'll just go ahead and finish that up. So we're going to prepare our music first and then prepare our server. That's okay. We can do that. So I'm going to come over here to the file manager, I'm going to find my downloads. So we have our, uh, actually, I actually have it already in another file ready to go. So we're gonna come to downloads and public domain music. And here we have 12, the 12 tracks that I downloaded. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna copy those to the thumb drive that I have plugged in. I just have to find it now. Just have to find it now. There it is, USB one. I'm gonna go ahead and say paste here. And it's gonna paste all 12 of our songs. Okay, so we have our 12 MP3s. We're gonna need that obviously in a minute. We have our 12 MP3s already on the thumb drive. All right, let's go back to our Raspberry Pi. And you can see after much time, it has loaded up my media Alexa for my video Alexa, we're gonna go ahead and click on the little hamburger. We're gonna click on download. And then as it's setting up, I'll go over. The pricing's like not, almost nothing. Um, so don't worry about that. As you can see, we have software. So if you don't wanna use a Raspberry Pi, you can just use your regular PC or your Mac computer. The only thing, as I said, is you have to leave it on 
24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, because it has to keep going to that device. We're using this because this is, we're gonna load this up and then just throw it on the shelf and never worry about it again. So we're gonna go ahead and click on download. And you can see the download went pretty quick. So you can see, and we didn't use that much. We, we pegged it out a little bit, but not that much, okay? And just as if it was a Windows machine, now that we have the download, we can just double click on the download and that's gonna install the software for us. Again, if you were using your Windows machine or your Mac machine, you'd be doing the same thing. It's just that you would, um, uh, you would be doing the same thing. It's just that you'd be doing it on that instead. So let's go ahead and look at it in here. Okay, so all we have to do here is double click, the same as you would expect to do on a Windows machine, and that's why I said once you, th these Raspberry Pis are really uh, pretty fantastic. Okay, so that took a couple of like a minute and a half. And you, again, you can tell what's going on when the Raspberry Pi is working really hard. That will ping up to 100%. When it's kind of just sitting around waiting, you can see it's one or two percent. So I had to just kind of wait till it came down. So it says, "Okay, do you want to install it?" We're going to go ahead and click on yes, and it's going to go ahead and do this. And again, I'm going to do this in real time for you. You can see it doesn't take that long. It really does not take that long. It's gonna just ask us for our password. I'm gonna leave it at this for right now, although I suggest you change the password on the Raspberry Pi, but again, not, a, not anything major that you have to worry about. Okay, so it has finished. It's finished loading. And I don't even think we need to, we don't even need to um, reboot, okay? Now, what it has done is set up a little web server. I'm just looking to see if it actually tells you. If not, I'm gonna tell you, so you'll, you'll be all set. Yeah, I don't think it actually tells you. What it has done is it has created a web server and the web server is going to be the same number as your Raspberry Pi and it's gonna be 52051. I'll put that on the screen, 52051. So it's 192.168.17, in this case, 192.168.1.178 and then it's colon 52051. Now, again, remember we said that the Raspberry Pi is a little slow, so I'm not gonna do it on this machine. I can do it on any machine in the house. So I'm gonna come back to my DEX and I'm going to put in that information right now. So I'm gonna say 192.168.1.178 colon 52051. And that should bring up the interface and that's it. Now again, you could have done this on the uh, Raspberry Pi, it's actually a lot quicker to do it this way. Just any machine in the house, you can now access it. So now that the software's up and running, we it goes through the setup, so it click, we click next. And this is where we add it to the, you have to link it to your Amazon account. So the Amazon account that has the Amazon Echo that you wanna load it to, you have to do that. I guess I will have to show you this in real time. Let's just go ahead and do it. So here's my Amazon account. Uh, the only issue is, is it's gonna knock the other one I have off and put it on, so. These are the things I do for you guys. So that's all it was. It just needed to just go ahead. It is This unit is now associated with my Amazon account. That's all it is. They very nicely ask you if you wanna load some sample music. We're gonna say no, we don't wanna load any sample music. And let's go ahead and copy our music over and then I'm gonna run down the list. So to copy our music over, we'll go back to the Raspberry Pi for a second. I'm going to take, sorry about that. I'm gonna take the thumb drive that I have in the computer and I'm gonna plug that into the Raspberry Pi. And again, I have the, there's links down there for the little adapter that I use. And you can see it comes right up. And we're gonna actually go ahead and say open file manager. And then here is the music. So we're gonna go ahead and 
take those 12 pieces and I can either do a copy or a move. I will say copy and then I'm going to come back to the click on the little home button there and you'll see a little folder called music. Now you can use any folder, doesn't make any difference. I just prefer to use the music folder. And now that's copying it off of the thumb drive onto the SD card for the, it's copying it onto the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. And you can see I have nine gigs worth. This is a 16 gig card. I have nine gigs worth left. You'll be surprised when you start copying music over. You are not going to need nine gigs. All right. So we'll go out of the Raspberry Pi. We'll come back to our browser. And here we are at the dashboard. Okay, so looks a little confusing, but it's fine. Basically, he says we have zero songs. We're not watching any folders. We don't have any albums, and we don't have any artists. Okay, that's fine. So let's take a look over here on the left. We have a dashboard. We have now playing. We have watch folders. Watch folders means these are the folders to look at because this is where the music's going to be. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to add a folder. And these are the different folders that we have. You'll see this one here that says Media Pi 6. You'll see, you'll always see a funny one that says Media Pi something. That's actually the thumb drive that's still plugged in. So I actually could run the music off of the thumb drive. And if you're somebody that keeps adding music all the time, that might be the, good, the way to go. Because what that means is, is that you can just unplug the thumb drive, plug it in your computer, throw some music on it, unplug it, plug it back in. The reason I don't like to use the thumb drive is because it is a little bit, makes the, the footprint a little bit bigger. So I just, I will just copy it over each time. So let's come back out here. Let's go to home. Let's go to Pi, And then we will find, where is it? We will find a directory called music. So, which is the same thing. Remember we clicked on that little house and then that's Pi, and then music. So we're going to go ahead and click on O. Okay, that's it. Now what it's doing is it's reading that folder off of the SD card. And you can see it says 12 songs are ready to go. It's that simple. And you can have more folders than this. Can you connect to a network folder? Yes, you can, but it's not easy to do. Um, I play with Pies all the time. You have to go and you have to set the boot record table. I'm trying to make this as simple as Pi, sorry as easy as possible for you. So the, the best thing is to do, like I said, is either run it off of the thumb drive or copy the files from the thumb drive over each time. And it takes two minutes to do it. So it's not a big deal. So we have playlists. We don't have any playlists yet. Uh, it will actually do, if you're using um, your iTunes, it can kind of sort of grab, but it has to be on your Windows machine. So you would have to have loaded this software on your Windows machine and then it will allow you to bring your music over from iTunes. So that's an option. Albums, it tells you the albums, artists, it's come up with these artists. Songs, there are the 12 songs that we have. Sharing, you're allowed up to two individuals per license, and we're gonna take a look at the pricing in a minute. You're allowed two, on, on the basic one, you're allowed two. I think it's like two, 10, and then 50 or something ridiculous like that. So what that means is, is we're set it up with this account, I could go to my friend and put in his email address and he would also be able to use it and, and, and use that part as well. The messages, this just is sort of like a running log. It's just telling you what's going on. The settings, again, if you have it on a Windows machine, they have the ability for it to, to code your music. But again, don't worry about that because you probably already have it as MP3s. Basically, this will it needs an MP3. So it's saying, look, if you have it in FLAC, WMA, WAV, OGG, I will turn it into an MP3 for you. I don't even bother to do that. It says uh, it'll keep scanning my folder every six hours to see if there's any more music. Plus, we can trigger it to do it any time. So there's no problem there or we can disable that feature. I'm not going to keep update. Um, when I put music on, it's not a folder that's gonna, that could keep changing. I could turn this off, leave it on, don't worry about it. Logging, I leave that on. That's gonna, that's what puts the messages in those messages so you can see what's going on. You can set it so that you need a password to get to this web server. As you saw, I just put in the IP address and it got us right in for some reason. Well, not for some reason. It's good to have that option. It's saying if you want to make it that somebody has to 
put a password in in order to get to it, that's fine. Then it says, what, uh, what IP address should I listen on? It says, it automatically says, well, look, this is the IP I'm on. You don't have to play with this. If you had to change it, that's fine. This part is very important if you're using something like the Rove Viva or you take your Amazon, you have Amazon Echoes in different places outside of your home. And this allows it so that you can say my media, play my media and be wherever. So in, the, in my car using the Rove Viva, I can say play my media and so on and so forth. Anyway, it has two features. This one is enabled via firewall NAT, which means you have to make sure that your router is set a certain way and you have to do a couple of things. Take the coward's way out. Use enable via push. It adds two seconds onto your request because what it does is it's gonna take your song, push it up to the cloud, and then push it from the cloud to your device. But then you don't have to mess with the, um, you don't have to mess with your modem or anything like that. So just don't, don't even, don't even bother. All right. So at this point, we're all set. We're ready to go. We can just start using commands. I'll turn this on and we'll start using some commands and we'll do a couple of things. Alexa, ask my media to play music. Playing songs from your My Media collection. Okay. So it's going to go off. Okay. We had a little extra second again because it had to take the song, pop it up, pop it back. It will show you that it just did something that's also in the messages. Alexa, next song. There are no more tracks in this playlist. Okay, because, we, I'm sorry, because we didn't, it's not a playlist. Okay, so let's come over here. Let's actually create a playlist and we'll call it, um, because I want to create a couple of different ones for you so you can see it. So we'll just call it cool music. Okay, then what we're supposed to do is come into our music. We'll pick uh, one two, three, four, add to playlist, cool music, okay, fine there, turn on, turn it off, let's take the last three, one, two, three, four, Okay, that, that's it, that's it, okay? So let's do, um, Alexa, ask my media to play my cool music playlist. Playing your cool music playlist from your my media collection. Again. We gotta wait a minute because it's a, a few seconds because it's gotta take it and move it up. If you're in the house, if you're not using it outside of the house, then don't worry about that. Um, it'll play a lot. It'll play a lot quicker. But again, one or two seconds, I can I can live with that. Alexa, next song. Okay, Alexa, ask my media to play the playlist driving music. Sorry, I could not find any driving music. Alexa, ask my media to play my driving music playlist. Playing your driving music playlist okay. from your my media. So I wanted to show you what the syntax was with that. It does do natural language, but not that well. So you got to say it like that. You got to say, ask my media to play my whatever it is play um, whatever it is playlist. If you do that, you should be fine. Okay. Again, it's showing us all those up top there. Alexa, next song. Once you're in the app, you can say next song, previous song, that kind of thing. Stop, play. If you have an Echo Spot or uh, an Echo Show, it'll actually show you the name of the song that it's playing. Alexa, ask my media to turn on shuffle. My media has set shuffle mode on. Okay. And that's it. I mean, we now have, we can now play any, all of our music. We can upload it. It's very easy to use. 
and we got it on a little tiny computer that we can leave uh, for the rest of whatever. So for a couple of bucks. So you, if you haven't used the Raspberry Pi before, this is a good first project to, to kind of get some confidence with it. And as I said, at this particular point, you can plug this into, um, because it's a zero, you can actually plug it into a micro uh, into a USB port. So I actually have mine plugged into, on the back of my modem, it has a USB port for power, and I actually have it plugged into the back of there, so you, can, you don't even see it. It's just plugged right in the back, and it works all the time. So, if you have any questions, please go ahead and, and make a comment below or send me a question, questions at thehightechnomad.com. Please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, and let's, uh, I'd, I'd like to see if I can get this one uh, to a thousand if I could. If not, like I said, the Patreon account works just as well. Come by there. Hey, if I've helped you out, and you've, 50 cents a dollar it really makes a big difference okay that's it for this episode of the high-tech nomad until next time this is the high-tech nomad signing out